Hey guys, how's it going? This is Natinator, and welcome back to Corpse Party Book of Shadows. I'm getting right into chapter 5 of 7, Shangri-La. Damn it, I'm so ready for this. I wonder whether it's going to be Naho. Oh, it's Morishigi. The guy that I can't pronounce his name, or maybe I am pronouncing it, but I always get it wrong in my mind. Whew, let's go. Alright. I deserve punishment for my actions. Each time I took a photograph with my phone, its flash made the school walls shine a bright, heavenly white. This was a place of solitude. Only she and I, not another soul to be found. I just can't stay away. I was actually, I was acutely aware that the hand in which I held my cell phone had begun sweating, and my breathing had become uncomfortably heavy. I was getting steadily more excited, and it was all because of her, a perfect flower, brightly adorning the wall with its myriad colors. Such was the departed female form spread before me. When I first encountered her, it took me several moments just to comprehend what I was seeing. I'd never beheld a person with such grievous injuries before. I'm not even certain the word injuries would apply in a situation like this. What state of mind could cause someone to do this to another human being? I was certain this action had been wrought by human hands, largely because both of her arms had been nailed to the wall with construction-grade linchpins. Based solely on the dugout abdomen, seemingly without the use of tools, the intestines lying on the floor, the smashed eyeballs, and the exposed jaw. One might think she'd been torn apart by wild animals, but the linchpins and the faint traces of bloody handprints here and there proved otherwise. And yet, this bold, finely crafted display of her body shows a clear will and a fiery passion on the part of the orchestrator. The blood that splattered far and wide shone in my flash like what shone in my flash like a bright red flame, and whole chunks of flesh were strewn about like flower petals. This flayed, eviscerated corpse with arms outstretched and nailed to the wall brought to mind images of Jesus nailed to the cross. But she was even purer than that. There was no self-sacrifice here, no lesson to be taught. Whoever did this clearly had fun with it, they enjoyed killing her. They enjoyed destroying her. I suppose there are animals who kill not for food, but for sport, leaving the carcasses of their prey behind. Of course, even intelligent animals like the lion, monkey, and dolphin can be subject to occasional exclusionism and abuse within their ranks. Yet... Only humans possess the capacity to turn their violent impulses into art. Can that truly be all there is to it, though? My internal monologue had become a soliloquy, if only for a moment. What was it about this girl that fascinated me so? Witnessing the aftermath of a murderer's actions did provide a certain freeing sense of childlike helplessness, to be sure. But why had she, in particular, stricken my fancy? This whole school is like a veritable corpse party. I've seen so many other bodies since I've arrived here, but none like hers. The moment I first laid eyes on her will stay with me always. Not just the sight, but the smell too. Hanging in the air like steam after a hot bath. She was young, junior or senior high age. But that's about all I could determine. Her uniform was tattered and soaked through with blood, 
and there was no student ID name tag to be found. The only reason I believed her to be a she, in fact, was due to the presence of a makeup bag and ornate tortoiseshell jewelry box on the ground nearby. I don't have the slightest clue who she may be, so why am I so drawn to her? Please, tell me, who are you? The alarm on my cell phone sounded as if in answer. Oh dear, is it already this late? A production of The Barber of Seville was airing on the MHK Educational Network that evening, and Mayu had asked me to record it for her. Being away from my TV at the time, I'd set a few reminder alarms on my phone to sound at regular intervals beforehand. Mayu was most renowned for her love of sweets and accessories and such, and I often wondered if anyone else knew how much she enjoyed the works of Rossini. What the hell? Go. Alright. I need to find Mayu. She's lost without me. Ah, bright and beautiful Mayu, beloved by all who knew her. I was the only one aware of the weaknesses that lay within her heart. Therefore, I was the only one who could truly protect her. Speaking of weaknesses, I wonder what's become of Mochida's little sister. I certainly enjoyed chasing her around earlier. <laughs> I gave her quite a fright. I adored watching her run for her dear life. It was an act befitting a psychopathic pedophile. Yet, I am no such thing. Why, then, did I glean such joy from it? I simply found her frail, cowering countenance to be irresistibly precious. The sight of an overwhelmingly weak person standing before me, utterly helpless and alone, elated my very soul. The sensation was nearly orgasmic. Yet, this was a friend's sister. For all the torment I'd caused, I certainly intended no harm. The perceived threat I represented just spawned such panic and horror within her that I couldn't help myself. Thinking back upon it still makes me smile. I swear, it feels like there's another me slowly and steadily awakening within. No, this isn't right. This isn't who I am. Could it be that this nightmarish location is messing with my head? Indeed. This wouldn't do at all. If I were to return to the real world with Mayu and the others without first discarding this new me, I would no longer be able to live the way I did before. <laughs> I suppose I'll need to erase all the pictures and movies I've stored in my phone. <sighs> Including hers. Book of Shadows, Episode 5, Shangri-La. Damn. Who the hell is Mitsu Mitsuki again? I don't remember. Anyway. Emmy! Toko! Anybody at all? Is anybody there? Crap. My phone. Is it okay? Damn it. The strap broke. Ha. <sighs> Nobody in here either. Where did everybody go? Hard to believe we were just in the student council room. I guess that Sachiko charm is what did us in, huh? This wasn't just some ordinary school building. Some fellow student council members and classmates and I all did that weird ritual. And then... I passed out. I thought maybe it was anemia or something. But when I woke up, I found myself in this thoroughly disturbing place, and my friends were nowhere to be found. At first, I thought maybe this was just Toko playing a prank on me, but I quickly realized that it went far beyond that. 
I got angry. I screamed. I cowered in fear and begged anyone who could hear me to stop doing this. But ultimately, I was just talking to air. This all felt like a bad dream. And I prayed, in my heart of hearts, that that's all it was. Because I knew I wouldn't be able to stand being in this horrible place all alone. I just wanted to see one, someone, to be with someone. I just wanted someone to call my name. I'm Mitsuki Yamamoto, an 11th grader at Byakuden Senior High School. I serve as clerk for the student council. I'm right here, everyone. Right here. Ooh, we're playing. Cool. Well, first I want to see what the hell this is. A decaying human head has been forcibly crammed into the top left cubby. It mustn't have been easy to make it fit, as there are tiny pieces of flesh and scalp tissue all along the frame. Who would have done something like this? You know, when I saw my first body here, I couldn't stop throwing up, but I think I'm starting to get desensitized. I just hope the others are okay. Okay, apparently I can look at this too. There are numerous indoor used slippers stowed in the cubbies. They appear much more old fashioned than the ones commonly worn in modern elementary schools. Hmm. I remember they call these shoe cubbies. It's very cute of them. Note Being alone is scary. But being with someone else is even scarier. Stay alert. Don't let your guard down. Ah. The door is frozen in place, as if it's just a decoration on the wall. It doesn't even rattle when pushed. Damn it. The windows were the same way. What the hell is going on in here? I'm not going to accomplish anything by staying in one place. I need to keep looking for my friends. Oh, okay. They're moving it for me. Oh, this is outside the art room. Okay. Mitsuki! Ah! H who's there? It's me, Kurosaki. Kurosaki? W where are you? We were in the same hallway, but separated by a huge hole in the floor. Still, I'd finally found someone. Kensuke Kurosaki, a classmate of mine from 2-4. After being alone in here all this time, finally, a friend! I could barely contain my exuberance. Oh no, it's that guy. Okay. Kurosaki, I'm so glad you're alright. You too. How are you holding up? You're not hurt or anything, right? No, I'm just fine. How about you, Kurosaki? Where are the others? I wish I knew. I only just woke up, and I'm still trying to find out how I got here. No kidding. We're all in the student council room, right? So how come we're in a run-down school now? Did someone carry us here while we were unconscious? That's the only explanation I can think of. But I can't imagine anyone actually doing that. Yeah, they'd have to be pretty sick. But then, well, have you seen what's in here with us, Kurosaki? The dead bodies? Yeah. First time in my life I've ever seen the real deal. I was about ready to piss my pants when I realized what I was looking at. Ew, come on. I'm serious. This place is so not safe. We need to find Kizumi, Fukuroi, and the others. Get the hell out of here! Kurosaki carefully inched closer to the hole in the corridor, bit by bit, then took a good long look inside. You could leap right over that, I'll bet. I mean, you're in the baseball club, and you're good at sports, so... Something like this should be no problem. There's no way! I'd have to be a track star to clear that. 
Well, you'll never be one with that kind of attitude. <laughs> Man, you don't mince words, do you? Wouldn't expect anything less of you, though. Anyway, I'm gonna go try to find some other way around. What? Wait! You stay there, Mitsuki, in case anyone else shows up while I'm gone. Y you don't need to be in such a hurry. Oh, why don't we stay here for a little while? D don't leave me alone. I guess I can be kind of a pain in the ass sometimes, in class and in student council meetings alike. I'm always trying to take charge. I suppose I'll have to be all docile and sweet like... Uh, sweet like Emmy if I want to be treated like a lady. Out of range. Damn, right when I need it the most, too. The time display on my phone read 2909. Well, that's certainly not right. Maybe it got messed up when I dropped it. What's that sound? Kurosaki's taking an awfully long time. I sure hope nothing happened to him. Hey, anybody there? Kurosaki! I'm here! Over here, Kurosaki! Mitsuki, is that you? Fukuroi! Thank goodness. I was looking all over for you, Mitsuki. It was Masato Fukuroi, a classmate of mine and the student council president. Oh, he's a council president, all right. I'll have to change my voice to accommodate that. He always had a scowl on his face, and dug his heels into the ground on everything. But right now, his cold obstinance was as welcome as could be. F Fukuroi! I'm so glad you're all right! Wait, wasn't that exactly the same thing I said to Kurosaki? I really need to get some new material. I'm sorry. You caught me right as I was starting to panic. I mean, we're in this horrible place and Kurosaki wandered off. S slow down. This isn't like you, Mitsuki. Are you saying Kensuke is here too? Yeah, he was on the other side of that pit. And since he couldn't figure out how to cross it, he just ran off to find an alternate way around. I see. Jumping the gun as always, then. Have you found anyone else, Fukuroi? What about Toko? I'm afraid not. No Okawa or Katayama, either. And no Kizumi. Well, Kizumi's probably fine by himself. Hmm. <laughs> you may be right. He's strong in body and strong of will. I doubt even a place like this could bring him down. At any rate, once we've reunited with Kurosaki, we should make finding the others our first priority. Maybe we should try to find an alternate route around this pit of ours. Wait, around this pit ourselves, then. Is that really such a good idea, though? What if Kurosaki gets here and we've already left? Then he'll wait for us. And if we set about finding our own route, there was... Sorry, um... There's a good chance we'll run into him along the way. And we might happen upon the others, too. You're right. We can't just stand around or we'll never get anywhere. And I have to admit, I am worried about Toko and the others. Me too. We have to confirm the safety of everyone from Briakadon as soon as possible. The door to the ant... Did I... I was about to say ant room. What the hell? The door to the art room is locked up tight. Alright. We're into the gameplay already. Let's... Let's check it out then. So the art room's locked and that hall's locked. Looks like the only way to go is down the stairs. They made that pretty obvious. Good-o though. Saves me trouble.
What's up now? Music room. Hells to the air. Oh, it's open too. Excellent. The first things I noticed when entering the room were a stack of candies and a box of matches right in front of my eyes. Had someone left these behind? These look fine. As long as they're not too damp, they should still be perfectly usable. Come on, flame. I struck one of the matches along the side of the box, and a small red flame flickered into being. I propped up one of the loose candles and placed the burning match head against its wick. It may not be much, but hopefully if someone comes into this room and sees this candle, they'll know there are other living beings in here with them. I decided it would be best to take the remaining candles and the box of matches with us, just in case we needed them. Alright, candles and the match. Why didn't we take the candy, though? I want the candy. Oh, there's a dead body, and there's a thing to pick up here. But guess what? I am all out of time, so we're just gonna have to wait to find out what's in the sparklies. Ooh, the suspense is killing me already. So, thank you guys for watching. I hope that you are enjoying this, as I most certainly am. So, um... I guess I'll see you in the next episode, and I will see you in the next piece of shit that I upload. So, stay tuned for more. I don't trust you.